Hey, good afternoon, art heroes. It's good to see everybody today on this beautiful Friday. I hope everybody is doing great. It's so good to see you guys once again. Welcome back. Today, what I'm going to be using is I'm going to be using a just a simple piece of white uh, printer paper. I'm going to be using a pencil. I'm going to be using a uh, black permanent marker and some crayons. That's what I'm going to be using today to create my uh, abstract portrait in the style of contemporary artist Sandra Silverwig. So uh, I do have one example that I'd like to share with you guys uh, on the screen before we begin. Now this is going to be way bigger than what I can show you on my webcam currently because of just the, I've got it on a huge piece of paper. But this is an example of what Sandra's artwork looks like. Color is very important in Sandra's artwork and she focuses a lot on color and on pattern to create some of her abstract portraits. I did create this using oil pastels and you can tell uh, oil pastels tend to blend a little bit easier when you put them on paper like this uh, because they're soft and the texture that they have they can easily blend in with other colors and transition. So if you do have oil pastels at home and you want to try it and you want to use those on this project this would be a great project to use oil pastels on. I do want to show you some of Sandra's artwork and you can see how beautiful and vibrant her use of colors are within each one of the, uh, the pieces of art. You can also see that she uses lots of patterns or repeated shapes and designs over the course of her artwork. So she creates these very interesting and unique looking portraits. They might not necessarily look exactly like the person that she's trying to portray, but that's what's called being, that's what's called abstracting something or just taking the basic shapes and forms and colors of something and implement it in your artwork instead of focusing, focusing so much on making it look like a photographic image or the exact uh, representation of that person. One thing I did want to tell you about Sandra, she has what I consider a superpower. And the reason I call it a superpower is because less than 1% of the world's population has this. It's something called synesthesia. And what synesthesia is, is almost like heightened senses. So there are people in the world that sometimes their senses interlock, meaning that sometimes when Sandra looks at colors, her sense of taste is also active at once. So in essence, she can almost taste the colors that she sees. When she listens to songs, she can visually see the colors of the notes that are being projected from the different instruments. It's a very rare occurrence and it only happens, like I said, in less than 1% of the population has this. But it's like these heightened sixth sense or super senses, so to speak. And she uses that as an advantage whenever she creates all these colorful uh, portraits and colorful art that she creates. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started making our own abstract portrait today. And I'm going to start with just a pencil and a piece of paper. And I'm going to make sure that my paper is portrait view. That means it's vertical, standing straight up in front. I'm going to just put my pencil right in the middle of the page. And I'm going to draw a line that goes straight up the top of the paper and I'm gonna turn this straight line into a capital letter L so right where I started I'm gonna put my pencil right back on that line and I'm gonna bring it over this way but I'm only gonna go about halfway right here I'm gonna stop about right here halfway between the center and the edge of the paper I'm just going to do this because it seems like my lines are a little difficult for you guys to see on the screen because of my webcam so I'm going to go ahead and outline what I just drew. So that way it'll be a little bit easier for you guys to see. Is I'm going to make another one of these L's, but I'm going to put it beside this. So I'm going to move over. I'm going to give myself enough room that I'll be able to color inside. I don't want to make it too skinny. I'm going to move over just a little bit here. I'm going to draw another line that's parallel with this one. It's going to come all the way down, but then it's going to stop before I get to the line. And then it's gonna go over just like the other L. I'm gonna stop at the same spot I did before. So I've got these two capital letter L's. Now from that part where I stopped, I'm gonna draw a straight line down and connect. And now I've got this 
block letter L that I've created. Now we're going to add some eyes to our portrait. And the way I'm going to make eyes is by making two horizontal lines. I'm going to start on the inside of my capital letter L here. And I'm going to draw one line that goes from the L all the way to the side of the paper. On an abstract portrait, you don't, you can if you want, you can make this second line go straight across right here. But the cool thing about abstract portraits is you don't have to make them perfect. So if you wanted this eye to be a little bit higher or a little bit lower, you can do that. I'm gonna make mine a little bit lower and just drop it down just a little bit here and draw my line from the nose all the way to the edge of the paper. We're gonna make these eyes pretty big. Uh, we're going to turn this into an ellipse shape. An ellipse is kind of like a football shape. A circle that gets skinnier on the ends comes to a point. So right where I started this line, I'm going to make a sad face line that comes up and all the way over, kind of like a rainbow, all the way over to the other side. Come up and then down. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side too. I'm also going to take the bottom of this line right here and do the same thing, but this time I'm going to make it a smiley face curve. It's going to curve down. We're going to make the top part the eyelids. We're going to make the bottom part where the iris, the color part of the eye is, and the pupil, that dark spot in the middle. I'm just going to make two, what I call like parentheses shapes, two sideway, uh, two side curves. It looks like a circle, but it disappears on the top right here, and it disappears a little bit on the bottom. Do the same thing on the other eye as well. In the middle, I'm just going to draw a circle in each one of these eyes. But what I'm going to do in the center of that eye is I'm going to go ahead and just use my black permanent marker to color in. Now make um, another thing that you can do with this since we've got eyes in here is we can add um, just some general shapes for like eyebrows or something like that. So above the eye, I'm going to make a couple more lines of curves. I'm just going to do this. Now the cool thing about abstract art is a lot of abstract art is just about shapes and patterns and design. It doesn't have to represent anything realistic. So you could just take two curved lines like this. And this one kind of comes off the page a little bit. So I'm going to have to come back onto the page like that. And that could be, that represents my eyebrows. I'm just using basic lines and shapes to do that. You could do the same thing over here if you wanted to. You can add some patterns into the eyelids right here. I'm going to do some, I'm going to make some zigzags in here. So I can make like a zigzag pattern right here in the eyelids. Once again, you don't have to do this either. You could do straight line patterns, like on this side. Maybe I want to do like a straight line pattern. Maybe it makes it look like it has like abstract eyelashes or something of that nature. The next thing I'm going to do is add the mouth, the lips. So the first thing I'm going to do to get the placement of my lips is I'm going to make a short line that comes down right from my nose right here. So right underneath my nose, I'm gonna make this line right here that goes to my top lip. This part can be kind of tricky. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try to figure out how big I want my mouth to be. So if I want my mouth to be about this big, I'm just gonna use my fingers to kind of help me line it up. And I'm gonna start right here where I stopped and I'm going to make a curve. It's going to curve down the point where I wanted to stop. And on the other side, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use my finger to kind of gauge where I want my lip to end. I'm just going to make a little curve down like this. Oh, and he looks very sad. Oh. Single tear. We're going to take the ends of our sad lips right here and we're going to draw a straight line that comes across. Now at the bottom, I'm going to create another one of those ellipses. Basically, we're creating the same shape that we made with our eyes. We're repeating it for the lips. When we come down here, we're going to repeat by making like a smiley face. We're going to curve up and reconnect to the edge, just like that. So now we've got the repetition of three uh, shapes here to kind of create a great unity for our image too. 
So at the bottom, what I'm going to do is continue this line. I'm going to make another vertical line that comes down from the bottom of the lips. It stops just right, right there. Right here at the bottom, I'm going to create a chin. So I'm going to start by going, I'm going to curve it up. And I'm going to make it go off the paper. So I'm going to curve this way, up, and then off the page. And what I want to do is I want to try to do the same thing on the other side. So now what we're going to do, we we'll draw a neck. And we're just going to go out here. What I like to do is I like to find where the, the pupils are or the eyes. And then just follow with my fingers down where the pupils are. And just follow the pupils down like this. And those will be the two spots where you make the person's neck. We're going to put some shoulders on here. And what I'm going to do is start on the side of the neck here. I'm just going to curve out and then just drop down a little bit till I go off the page and repeat the same step on the other side, out and down. Once I get the shoulders in, I can make it look like a, we're in a shirt. I'm just gonna take another curve, smiley face curve at the bottom of the neckline here and curve it all the way over to the other neckline right over here. One thing you can do with the shirt is if you'd like, you can give it some patterns and designs. I'm just gonna make some diagonal lines on my shirt like this, but if you wanna make curve lines or if you wanna put some other kind of design on yours, go right on ahead. I'm just gonna make a few of those lines there so that way I can do some different things with colors down here at the bottom. The last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna separate the cheeks right here by putting some, uh, I'm just gonna break them into different sections. So one thing I did notice about Sandra's portraits is she always likes to make a circle on these cheeks. And another thing that I might do is I might just draw some lines that separate these pieces. If you'd like to create other shapes you want to draw hearts inside the cheeks you could draw hearts inside there if you'd like if you wanted to make these circles look more like suns and have these little triangles that come off of them like sun rays you could even do that you could make yours have curly q uh lower eyelashes on them if you wanted them to the cool thing about this is you can do just about anything I'm gonna make, I'm just gonna do a second circle inside the cheeks right here. So that way I can add some different colors to it whenever I color these in. I'm gonna keep mine just like that. Once you are done, if you drew yours with pencil, you can go ahead and get your permanent marker and carefully outline all of your pencil lines. I am going to be using crayons on this example today just because I found that it's an art material that many of you have at home and already set to go at your disposal. So I'm gonna set out all my crayons here that I've got. I'm not really going to be using a lot of my neutral colors, so I'm not gonna be using a whole lot of black and white. I'm not gonna be using a whole lot of brown, um, even gray. If you have gray in your, in your set, I probably wouldn't use a lot of that. A lot of Sandra's artwork is very bright and vibrant and colorful. So when we start adding color to our portraits today, we are going to, I'm going to put up the color wheel. Now you'll probably see the color wheel pop up uh, right above my head, right up here in the video. So the color wheel is going to pop up here today. We're going to be coloring using what's called analogous colors. Analogous colors are any colors that are next to each other on the color wheel, like color family. So if I look at my color wheel and see that I want to do some kind of warm um, analogous color setup, first thing I'm going to do is I think I'm going to go with some red. So I'm going to find red and red is at the top of my color wheel and I'm going to look. If I go to the right on the screen, I can see that there's red orange or orange red. So if I find my red orange crayon, that's the next color that's next to it and then the next one down is orange so I found my orange and these three colors are analogous colors because they are next to each other on the color wheel and I'm going to use these colors to color in a section of my art so I'm going to start with the nose because that's where I started drawing I'm going to start 
red at the top right here. And I'm going to start coloring in red. And I'm going to go in short crayon strokes, just like I colored in my last ones. But eventually what I'm going to do is I'm going to start getting lighter and lighter and not pushing quite as hard as I go down. And I'm going to stop. It should be darker at the top as I go down. And then I'm going to take the red orange, which is the next color in that color family. And I'm going to start using red orange next. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to overlap into that light area of red right there. And now I'm going to switch to my orange after my red orange and I'm going to finish the nose. I'm going to overlap the orange into the red orange. So I've got those three colors that I know are analogous colors. So they're next to each other on the color wheel. You can pick three other colors using that color wheel that's that's up there as well. So I could even use uh, some cool colors. Let's go with, let's do blue. I need to find a blue. And they could even be one of these other kinds of blues that are in here. We've got this like cerulean blue. It doesn't have to be the exact blue. Kind of like this, this color called blutiful. I'm going to use that as my blue, and I'm going to use violet, yes, we'll use purple, and the color between that is, I'm going to use indigo, indigo is kind of like a blue violet, so we're going to use that in between, and I'm going to use that, I'm just going to pick this section right here, and I'm going to create, to start with my blue, You see how I went from dark by pushing very hard to getting lighter and lighter. I'm going to switch to my indigo. And then I'm going to take my violet and finish this section. there, And let those colors blend. Oh, that looks really cool. I think I'm going to keep this same color family and do the same one just up here at the top. So I'm going to skip this one and then color this one. So this is the cool part about this project is now you can go in and use analogous colors to color the entire page. So that's what we're going to work on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to think about putting some warm colors next to cool colors so that those colors will pop out really jump off the page to create those vibrant really exciting colors that uh, Sandra Silverwood uses All right now if you don't want to make you don't have to create these color blends in every part of your portrait if there is a small area for instance these lines right here you can do this you can choose two colors that you really like i really like these colors red violet and blue green and what you can do is you can just use these colors and create a pattern If you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to like and comment and share this video. Don't forget to subscribe while you're here. Let me know how you guys have done on your abstract, colorful portraits. I'd love to see examples, so please make sure you share them with me. Well, thank you guys once again. Thank you so much for joining me. But until next time, folks, you guys have a great week. Have a good day, everybody. I'll see you guys soon.